Bitcoin gave us digital gold, Ethereum gave us smart contracts, but neither gave us everything we actually need. Here's what nobody's talking about. For thousands of years, we've been splitting money into pieces. Gold stored value but couldn't move fast. Cash moved fast, but lost value. Banks settled trades but controlled everything. We've never had one system that does it all, until now. COSPA just cracked the code that stumped every blockchain project since 2009, and if you're not paying attention, you're missing the biggest infrastructure shift in crypto history. What's up crypto fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here I break down the projects that actually matter, not just the ones with the loudest marketing. Today we're diving deep into Caspa, and trust me, this isn't your typical altcoin hype video, we're talking about fundamental architecture that could redefine how money and data move globally. So, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into why Caspa might be the most underrated project in crypto right now. Let's rewind for a second, throughout history, money's been judged on two big jobs, can it store value, and can you actually spend it? Gold nailed the first one for centuries but, uh, good luck buying coffee with a gold bar. Fiat currencies like the dollar became spendable, but, you know, inflation eats them alive. Then there's settlement, the boring but critical infrastructure that makes transactions final. Banks and clearinghouses handle that, charging fees and controlling access. No single system has ever combined all three functions, not gold, not fiat, not even bitcoin. According to crypto analysts, modern cryptocurrencies introduced a wild possibility. What if one network could be your savings account, your payment system, and your settlement layer all at once? Bitcoin tried by merging currency with ledger, creating digital scarcity on one network. But here's the problem. Bitcoin's too slow to be everyday money and can't handle complex settlement beyond simple transfers. Ethereum added programmability, but now you're paying 50 bucks in gas fees during congestion and dealing with MEV bots front-running your trades like vultures. Other projects took their shot. Litecoin called itself digital silver but brought nothing new to the table. Bitcoin Cash promised peer-to-peer -peer cash and delivered community drama instead. So, Dash tried instant payments but, honestly, it stayed trapped in niche markets. XRP and Stellar on the other hand, pitched themselves to banks but, well, they sacrificed decentralization along the way. Every single project hit the same wall, and that's the crypto trilemma. You can pick two out of security, scalability and decentralization, but you just can't have all three. Or so we thought. Here's where it gets interesting. Caspa walks onto the scene claiming it solved both the crypto trilemma and something called the fiat trilemma. Now, I know what you're thinking. Another blockchain promising the moon. But stick with me because the architecture here is genuinely different, and honestly, the implications are massive. Money has historically failed to unify three essential qualities. Money needs to be saleable across time, meaning it holds value without inflating away. It needs to be saleable across scales, working for both your morning coffee and, you know, those big international corporate settlements. And it needs to be saleable across space, transferring instantly across borders. Gold worked across time but, well, you can't email gold bars. Fiat works across space but it loses purchasing power every year. Bitcoin works across time and space but it kind of chokes on transaction throughput. No money in human history has conquered all three simultaneously. That's not hype, that's just historical fact. So when Caspa claims to unify store of value, medium of exchange, and standard of settlement on one layer one network, you better believe I'm raising an eyebrow. Because if that's actually true, we're not talking about another altcoin, we're talking about a fundamental restructuring of how digital economies could operate. Alright let's break down how Caspa actually pulls this off because the devil's in the technical details. So, first up, store of value. Caspa has a fixed supply and uses proof of work, which by the way is the same combo that gave Bitcoin its whole digital gold reputation. Fixed supply, yeah, that creates digital scarcity you simply can't inflate away. Proof of work ties creation to real world energy and computation, making the network expensive to attack and honestly, impossible to manipulate by wealthy insiders. This isn't some proof of stake system where, you know, the rich just keep getting richer by staking. This is physics based security. Now here's my take Caspa isn't trying to replace Bitcoin as store of value. Bitcoin already won that race and has the brand recognition and institutional adoption. But Caspa inherits the same scarcity fundamentals, which gives it store of value credibility when needed. The real magic happens in the next two rolls where Bitcoin falls flat. Medium of exchange is where things get spicy. According to blockchain researchers, a true medium of exchange needs to move quickly, cheaply, and reliably. Litecoin tried and, honestly, offered nothing unique. Bitcoin Cash forked and, well, just ended up fracturing its community. Dash launched Instant Send, 
but yeah, it never really escaped niche adoption. Even Ethereum, which totally dominates DeFi, still suffers from congestion, unpredictable gas fees, and MEV exploitation. And for those who don't know, MEV is maximal extractable value. Basically, it's bots and validators reordering transactions to profit at your expense. It's kind of like a hidden tax on every trade, making Ethereum unreliable as peer-to-peer -peer money. Caspa solves this with its block DAG architecture. Unlike traditional blockchains that process one block at a time, Caspa's DAG processes multiple blocks simultaneously, confirming transactions in seconds even under heavy load with negligible fees. No Layer 2 networks required, no rollups fragmenting security, no MEV bots gaming the system, everything happens at Layer 1 which means every transaction gets the same security and neutrality. A cafe in Berlin can accept Caspa faster than Visa without the 3% cut. A gig worker in Manila gets paid instantly instead of waiting days for PayPal. This is peer-to-peer -peer cash that actually scales globally. Fun fact. Caspa literally means silver in some languages, so while Litecoin claims to be digital silver, Caspa's got the name and the tech to back it up. Talk about irony. Now let's talk about the third role, and this is where Caspa gets truly revolutionary standard of settlement. Settlement isn't just moving money around. So, it's basically the final clearing of value and information across enterprises, markets, and even nations. In traditional finance, central banks and clearinghouses handle settlement while fiat currencies ride on top. But in crypto, most projects, well, they treat settlement as an afterthought or just outsource it to Layer 2 networks. According to the Caspa development team, their block DAG ledger provides scalable, immutable infrastructure that finalizes transactions within seconds. With Dagnite, Caspa achieves internet-level transaction speeds while staying decentralized and secure. And on top of this, programmability is emerging through VPROGs, which is a new model for settlement logic. Unlike Ethereum's smart contracts, which are, you know, complex and gas-hungry, VPROGs are designed to be simpler, safer, and more scalable. This really aligns perfectly with Caspa's settlement-first philosophy. Here's why this matters in my expert opinion. Ethereum tried to be everything and ended up congested and expensive. Bitcoin focused on store of value and honestly, can't scale beyond that. Caspa is purpose-built for settlement, meaning it's optimized for finality, speed, and security at the base layer. No fragmentation, no reliance on external roll-ups, no compromises. But settlement goes way beyond just finance. Caspa's architecture positions it as a universal settlement layer for any type of transaction or record. Supply chains can anchor verifiable milestones. Business contracts can execute automatically. Academic degrees and professional licenses can be issued immutably. Research data can be timestamped for reproducibility. Identity systems and governance can operate transparently. Just as the internet became the universal carrier of information, Caspa could become the universal carrier of trusted transactions and records. That's not speculation, that's what the architecture enables. Enterprises can clear cross-border supply chain transactions in seconds instead of days. Energy markets can finalize peer-to-peer -peer power trades in real time. NGOs can transfer funds without banking restrictions. Carbon credits, identity verification, and scientific publications can be anchored permanently. Banks could continue operating as usual, but with Caspa's Layer 1 as a faster, more secure, decentralized settlement foundation underneath. Let me give you my unfiltered take on why proof-of-work matters here. POW ensures fairness and immutability. Caspa's block DAG keeps every participant on equal footing. Unlike proof-of-stake systems where wealth compounds advantage and early whales control the network, Caspa's security is grounded in energy and computation. Settlement requires trust that cannot be rewritten by insiders. POW anchors finality in physics, not politics or wealth concentration. You can't buy your way into controlling a POW network the way you can with POS. You'd need to outcompete the entire global mining network, which is economically irrational. This is critical because settlement infrastructure must be neutral. If banks or governments could influence transaction ordering or finality, the whole system collapses into the same trust problems we have today. Caspa's POW architecture guarantees that no entity, no matter how wealthy or powerful, can manipulate settlement. That, that's a feature, not a, not, not a bug. Let's address the obvious question. If Caspa's so revolutionary, why isn't everyone talking about it? Two reasons. First, Crypto markets are driven by hype cycles and marketing budgets, not fundamentals. Projects with flashy influencer campaigns and venture capital backing dominate headlines, even when their tech is mediocre. Caspa's been building quietly, focusing on engineering over promotion. Second, most investors don't understand settlement architecture. It's not sexy. It's not memeable. 
but it's the backbone of every financial system on Earth. According to well-known crypto analysts, the projects that win long-term aren't the ones with the loudest marketing, they're the ones solving actual infrastructure problems. Caspa unifies what's been historically separate money's core functions with system-level settlement into one secure architecture. That's not incremental improvement, that's paradigm shift territory. Here's the bottom line. Bitcoin remains the king of store of value with institutional adoption and brand recognition that just can't be beaten. Ethereum dominates smart contracts, even though it has its scaling issues, but neither provides a complete solution, honestly. Bitcoin can't really scale into everyday transactions or handle complex settlement. Ethereum, on the other hand, sacrificed simplicity and affordability for programmability. Caspa doesn't try to replace them. Instead, it completes the equation by unifying all three functions at layer one, without compromises. If Caspa delivers on its technical roadmap, especially with Dagnite and VPROGs, this could honestly become the foundational layer for digital economies that, well, haven't even been built yet. We're talking decentralized supply chains, real-time energy markets, trustless international commerce, all settling on one neutral, scalable, secure network. Is Caspa going to flip Bitcoin tomorrow? No. Is it going to replace Ethereum's DeFi ecosystem overnight? Also no. But is it solving problems that those networks can't? Absolutely. And that's what makes it worth paying attention to. Alright crypto fam, that's the deep dive on Caspa's three-role architecture. If this breakdown gave you a new perspective on settlement infrastructure, go ahead and drop a like to let me know. If you think I'm crazy, or if you've got counter-arguments, drop them in the comments, because I actually read those and loved the discussion. Subscribe if you want more analysis on projects building real technology instead of just riding hype waves. Quick reminder, this video is for educational purposes only and is not financial advice. Cryptocurrency investing carries significant risk and you should never invest more than you can afford to lose. Always do your own research, understand the technology, and make informed decisions. Caspa, like all crypto projects, is speculative and subject to market volatility, regulatory changes, and technological risks. Stay smart, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.